Welcome back guys. Uh, again, looking at the parables, uh, we have taken a break, but now I would want us to consider a different uh, parable given by Jesus uh, at around the same time. And this one is in uh, Luke chapter 16. I feel like they are a bit uh, similar with the first parable we looked at, the parable of the rich fool. Um, so just uh, look with me to Luke uh, chapter 16 and then uh, verse 19. And we'll read, this is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Many of you know about this parable, so they, it's not uh, uh, unfamiliar to many of us. Let me read. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and he lived in luxury every day. Wow. <laughs> At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and he saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus at his side. So he was called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, <laughs> remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides, besides all this, between us and you is a great chasm that has been fixed. So that those who want to go from here to you cannot nor can anyone cross over from there to us. Verse 27, he answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they, may, uh, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and their prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he replied. But if someone came from the dead, no, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is one of the saddest parables that Jesus would give. We call it a parable, even despite the fact that it is not introduced like the other parables as a parable. But one of the things that so clearly strikes us here is that while Jesus is giving this parable, he's talking about something that is so real. So it even befits us to think, would it be that he's talking about something that actually happened or actually will happen. Clearly, Abraham is in heaven, according to the text. And these two men, Lazarus and the rich uh, man, die after their life on earth. Lazarus is carried by angels, we are told, to Abraham's bosom. Well, to paradise, if you would say. Because we remember Jesus on the cross telling the thief, today you will dine with me in paradise. So we can expect that he is, this is paradise we are talking about. But what qualified Lazarus to go there? There is no indication whatsoever in God's word to make us think that because Abraham, Lazarus was poor, and so he's given... Uh, a, a space in heaven, a place in heaven just because of poverty. Of course not. And neither can we affirm that because the rich man was rich, then that is why he ends up in hell. 
No, I don't uh, think so. But see how this rich man lived. The Bible says that he was dressed in purple and fine linen. It also adds to say, and he lived in luxury every day. What kind of wealth do you need to live in luxury every day? To, if, if you're thinking about the most luxurious thing you can do, this guy was doing it daily. He was a filthy rich man. The Bible tells us that at his gate, and this is the sad part, that Lazarus was not far removed from him. He was sitting at his gate. Lazarus was covered in sores, longing to eat from the rich man's table. Wouldn't he have shown a little kindness to Lazarus? Wouldn't he have been gracious enough to provide him with food or some shelter of sorts? Perhaps even find medication for him with his sores. So bad were they that even the dogs came and licked his sores. Different people might look at this differently. When dogs are licking your sores, first dogs were despised of all animals uh, in Israel. And, and even the most despised of people was compared to a dog. A dog was licking the sores. Someone would think that maybe licking sores because uh, to agonize uh, the Lazarus father. But maybe even dogs looked at Lazarus and his estate and they were thinking, how can we comfort you, Lazarus? And maybe because of how dry the, the souls can become and painful. Maybe the saliva of the dogs was some bit of comfort to this poor man. And no indication are we given that the rich man did anything at all for the state of Lazarus. That is sad. Anyway, when they both die, and the rich man ends up in hell, and Lazarus ends up in heaven, the rich man looks and he sees Lazarus with Abraham. And he calls to Abraham and says, Father Abraham, now, one of the things I think is a reality about hell is that there will be a consciousness of the people in heaven. We will perhaps even be able to con conceive them, that you can see them and you can see, whoa, that's my brother, that's my sister, uh, who we were with on earth. And he says, send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue. I don't think this is literally to cool his tongue. Again, at this point, we do not expect that the rich man has a body. But we know that his soul has gone to hell. His body will be resurrected on the last day and joined with him in hell. But his soul is in hell, in much torment. So much agony is he that he says, he calls the situation he is in fire. He says, because I am in agony in this fire. Torment beyond torment. Later on, he, he can't even wish this for his brothers. He, he tries to plead with Abraham, help that my brothers will not go through the kind of pain that I am going through. But even at that point, it was pointless. Abraham looks at him and he calls him son. For sure we know that he is not a son of Abraham anymore. Because at the place he is, it is not possible for Abraham to do anything about his estate. He calls him Father Abraham. But guess what? There's nothing he can do. Abraham 
says there is a chasm between us and you. We cannot come to where you are. You cannot. This torment is for you eternally. There is nothing we can do about it. You just have to live with it. Oh, so sad. One of the things I want to believe is that the best, the best state we would ever be is here on earth. Because here on earth, for the sinner, for those who do not know God, there is a chance that we would use the earthly possessions God has given us, that we would use the high places of privilege God has given us to glorify him, to serve one another, to, to show kindness and love and to do good, good works. Not, of course, to presume that those good works will earn us a place in heaven. Of course, that is not what I'm saying. But God has given us resources for which we can use to glorify him on earth. This rich man did nothing of that sort. This is extremely sad for him. Because at this point, whatever wishes he has, he can receive nothing. His, 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 his condition is sealed. His fate is final. He can do nothing to change it. But look at the poor man, Lazarus. When he was on earth, the Bible says he received bad things. Poverty and suffering and pain and all those things. Not to presume that when you receive bad things, you will go to heaven. But to say that perhaps in his pain and his misery, and he looked to God and he was waiting on God as his hope was only in God. And now in heaven he's comforted. Even for us who are believers, the best state we can be is here on earth because we can do something about how our heaven will be. God says that the criteria by which we will share the glories in heaven will be our good works. Would you, would you desire, endeavor to do good works here on earth? And perhaps in heaven so much glorious will be your crown. But in this parable, this rich man tries to beg for his brothers and says, Aki Father Abraham, just send a message to my brothers. Maybe someone from the dead will convince them that this place is really as bad as it is. And he says, they will not listen. If they cannot listen to Moses, if they cannot listen to the prophets, they will not listen. Even today we know even if someone rose from the dead and claimed to rise from the dead, we wouldn't listen. If you do not listen to the prophets and to Moses now, the teachers of God's word now, the, the kind of knowledge that has been given, the Bible, if you are not careful to read it and understand what God is saying to you now, on that side there is no the, there's, the, there's no possibility of you being redeemed. Would you, would you heed the word of God sent to you through the prophets, through Moses, through the teachers, through your pastors, through your study? When you read God's word, would you heed God's word now? Anyway, he says, Even if someone was sent from the dead, they would not listen. I, I don't know how our hearts are. Maybe we are those who, like the Jews, think we are believers. Father Abraham, yeah, he was a Jew. He expected that he would go to heaven on account of that. But no. The kind of life he lived displays no faith in God, displays no kindness to this uh, poor man, and he tells nothing about his spirituality or his state of heart to love God. What has God given to your hands? Are you like this rich man? Are you just living in luxury for yourself? Or are you going out of your way? at least do good deeds. 
And if you are a believer, those good deeds will amount to your crown. If you are not a believer, no good deed can you do to impress your father. Believe fast and then use whatever God has given you to bring him glory.